This past month has been a little quiet on the public front from Mars One, with the organisation primarily focused on preparing for the next stage in the project's development. As I mentioned back in August, Mars One is currently looking to expand its permanent team by hiring additional experienced personnel. For instance, there are a number of individuals in the aerospace sector interested in coming over and working for Mars One, with one notable example being a senior individual over at NASA working on one of their Mars missions who's currently negotiating with Mars One. In addition to this expansion of the team, the next stage will involve the issuing of a number of concept design studies for all of the key mission components, with some particular examples being a follow-up study with Paragon on their life support system, and also additional studies with Lockheed Martin, the Phase A study for the 2020 lander, and a study on the entry, descent and landing system capabilities that might be expected to be existing around, say, the 2024-2025 timeframe, when Mars One needs to land much more of the heavy modules, such as the Eclis module that Paragon is working on, and of course, the construction of the simulation outpost for the purposes of astronaut training. All of this will be funded by an investment infusion targeted at $15 million, though additional investors are still being sought at this time before the deal closes at the end of winter. In October, Mars One CEO was involved in high-level talks with investors in Europe, the United States and Dubai, with some quite positive results. In particular, Dubai continues to express a strong interest in hosting simulation outpost Alpha, though international competition remains fierce in this process, with Reunion Island off the coast of Madagascar also having recently joined the race, with a request to use some of their volcanic planes for this purpose. Over on the Mars Exchange, Mars One has been highlighting the work of a team of botanists from Wageningen University in the Netherlands, trying to figure out how to grow common vegetables in a Martian soil analogue. This Food for Mars series consists of 10 blog posts and is a truly fascinating look at current world-leading research into the nutritional logistics of enabling human life on Mars and is definitely worth checking out. And as always, I'll post a link to that down below so you can check out the findings from this research group. But now onto media highlights from the past month, of which there's been quite a few. First up, three of the Mars 100 took part in an online discussion with Skeptic Show The Unseen podcast in order to discuss common misconceptions about Mars One. It's a quite in-depth discussion, lasting around 100 minutes in total, covering the selection process, the funding model, risks, the technology development roadmap, and of course, why we want to go. I'll post a link to the podcast down below, which should certainly make for some interesting background listening. But whilst we're on the subject of podcasts, I also recently took part in an episode of the Naked Scientist podcast out of the University of Cambridge, where a professor of geology, a professor of astronomy, a space politician and myself debated the reasons why we should send humans to Mars. Again, you'll find the link to that down below, with the discussion starting around 22 minutes into the show. Now, as some of you may remember, I spoke to Neil deGrasse Tyson back in June about Mars One for an episode of Season 2 of his Star Talk TV show. The 10-part season has just started airing, so keep an eye out for the Mars One episode when it comes out in a few weeks' time, which features myself as well as Mars One CEO, Bars Lansdorp. But in the meantime, you can check out an interview with Dr. Tyson about Mars One that he gave just a week or so ago down below. And, well, I'll let you check it out for yourself. But long story short, Dr. Tyson seems to be significantly more positive about Mars One since speaking to us both. And to wrap up this month's media highlights, I was contacted just a few weeks back by YouTubers Charlie McDonnell and Jimmy Hill about appearing on an episode of their YouTube channel, Serial Time, which has been producing a series of Mars themed videos. You can check out the resulting interview just over there, and I certainly thoroughly enjoyed getting the chance to speak to them both. And, you know, in fact, if you do know any other YouTubers who might be interested in potentially organising a collaboration, by all means, feel free to pass on my details and I'll see what I can make happen. So what's been happening with the Mars 100 over the past month? Well, as always, we've been continuing various educational programmes promoting planetary science, human spaceflight, and the study of STEM subjects more generally in schools around the world. This month I wanted to highlight the activities of two particular candidates. Over in South America, 
Yuri has been giving talks at various high schools over in Uruguay and also participating and helping them with student rocket launches. And over in Egypt, Mido has been giving talks about Mars and space science in a number of schools, as well as at a children's cancer hospital in Cairo. Great work, guys. It's often hard these days to keep track of all the events around the world we're participating in, but I'll try to highlight just a few of them each month in order to give you a global perspective. We also thought it would be fun, with the release of The Martian, which is still doing fantastically well in the cinemas, to make our own Mars 100 versions of The Martian movie poster, some of which you can check out here. But I do have to give a special mention to this one, by Australian candidate Josh Richards, which certainly made me laugh. And if you want to check out the full album of the Mars 100 The Martian movie posters, you can check them out just down below. Finally, a few words on what you can expect to see from this channel in the near future. Well, first up, I was really pleased to hear the positive reception that many of you had to the idea of a series on the science of exoplanets. I've got some early work done on this, and I'm looking on moving into full production in early 2016 for this, and well, let's just say there's some really exciting ideas that I'm exploring for that. But in the meantime, next week I'm going to be producing a video which will be coming out on how you might detect transiting alien megastructures if they were to exist, what the potential signs might be in the light curves from, say, Kepler or a future transiting observatory up in space. That will then be followed by a series of videos examining the search for life, both within our solar system and indeed beyond. But in order to do all this, what I really want to do is get into a rhythm of producing a new video every week with a regular release date so that you basically know when to expect new content on this channel. So to that end, I'm tentatively looking to release a new video every Saturday at 4pm UTC, with the first Saturday of each month being dedicated to a Mars One mission update. Let me know, of course, what you think about that. And I do notice, of course, that we're rapidly approaching 2,500 subscribers. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for this, and particularly some of you that have been with us for over a year now. So what I want to ask you now is, are there any special requests you have for a video to commemorate this milestone? As always, drop me a comment, suggestion or questions down below and join the conversation. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, I produce monthly Mars One mission updates, as well as content on human spaceflight and planetary science. This month's feature video is a recent talk given by Mars One CEO Bars Lansdorp at the Cutting Edge Science Festival in Oslo, Norway. Next week, I'll be diving into the science of the feasibility of detecting transiting alien megastructures. But in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest developments in the Mars One mission.